All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. And what I want to go into today is going to be talking about these four chariots that were hovering over in Afghanistan. You know, and um, as you see the video here, it's going to be a loop of it here in the background with no sound. But um, for those of you all that saw the video, which I'm pretty sure the masses of us seen this video, even the Apostle Hard did a lesson going into this. So for those of you all that saw this, this is clearly showing you the um, the perfection of the chariots and how there is nothing that Esau can do. There's nothing e Esau can do. Esau is in trouble. All right. Esau is clearly in trouble, man. As you've seen, they shot that sidewinder missile at this chariot. And when you look up a sidewinder missile, it ain't no joke. It's like an air torpedo. And they can travel up the speeds of a uh, Mach 2, which is uh, extremely fast. That's two times the as fast as the speed of sound. So that impact is very potent on a sidewinder missile. And as you see here in the background, these chariots hovering, dripping dripping whatever they dripping i know um when i sat back and looked at it um i know there's something um in terminology that how we speak if you stunting or if you if you look nice or if you got on jewelry all right a lot of people will say you know what i'm saying i don't know uh different areas different areas they might say something different but they'll be like you dripping or i'm dripping you know so when i saw them chariots doing that you know it was as a joke and i was like yeah look they up there dripping man you know, because ain't nothing stopping them. You know, they stun and ain't nothing nobody can do to stop it. You know, but nevertheless, going back to what I'm saying, they was up there dripping, whatever they were dripping, you know, and they ended up shooting that missile at the chariot. And when you look at that smoke up here, you know, it'll make you look like, wow, that was a huge explosion. You know, usually we see videos of the chariots and they're, they're bopping and weaving you know, they're flying through bullets, you know what I'm saying? But right here, the chariot actually got touched. And when you watch that smoke wither away, you obviously see that these chariots are unscathed, untouched, invincible and indestructible, you know? And part of me also thought when I watched that video, they know th these people know exactly what those are, that those chariots are, that there's angels in those chariots. You know what I'm saying? Because we know how curious Esau is. And he'll send up a drone. He'll he'll investigate something thoroughly before making a move like that. So to immediately make a move like that, just seeing it, they know what's up. They know for a fact that these are the chariots. And they know for a fact that what we're saying is the truth coming out of the scriptures. Even the elder brother Ramah out there in London, and this is something I mentioned very often in my videos, but when he had that dream that he was having a conversation with Evelyn Rothschild, and he had that dream he was speaking to him, Evelyn Rothschild said, I know exactly who you are. And Ramah answered him and said, hey, well, how you feel about the chariots? And when he told him that, he said he had a very blank look, very nervous, very terrified look. And watching this video, it makes sense. And we know we didn't have we don't have to see any proof like that to know that the chariots are indestructible. But the Lord really treated us to be able to see this type of power, see it firsthand with these chariots. I've never seen a video of a chariot getting shot or anything. And it also cuts that Roswell garbage, how they'll say that they shot down a UFO and they got they got, um you know, parts of debris and created technology. They ain't shoot down no chariot. This is clear proof. It's impossible to do that, man. But going back to it, it shows you the power of the Lord. All right. And this is the type of power that's on our side. All right. And even when you look at the chariots being indestructible, you you know, when that power comes, when that power comes, the elect are going to be indestructible in that day, too, man. And that's just what it is at the end of the day. All right. This devil thought he had a chance. Even though he knows he doesn't have a chance, but even as you read it in 2nd Ezra 13, where it goes into that giant mountain, 
and those men durst fright and they still yet tried to fight against them. They know they don't have a chance, but that shows their level of pride. And they still will try to do it. They'll still try to to fight. And it's only going to end up in their demise. All right. This is the book of Job, chapter five, verse 12. And it reads, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. All right. And when I saw that missile hit that chariot, that's one of the first precepts that came to my head because their thoughts and their intention was to shoot it and to damage it somewhat. All right. And when that smoke withered away, it's funny how it happened. All that smoke was there. So you can imagine how they felt looking at it to see the outcome. And when that smoke dissipated, them chariots continued to float and drip. You know, it kind of put me in the mindset of that uh, first Dragon Ball Z Broly movie. <laughs> when um, Broly was powering up and he was walking toward Kakarot. And Vegeta went up to shoot that missile at him. That, well, not missile, but that ball of energy. You know, and it was a very powerful ball of energy. He shot at Broly. You know, and there was a lot of smoke and, and dust that was in the air. And you would have thought that it would have affected Broly. But soon as that smoke withered away, Broly just standing there with even madder look, not even phased. That thought came to mind when I watched that video of that chariot, man. And you can imagine how frustrated Esau is knowing that there's nothing that he can do. And that was a clear example. Like I stated earlier, we don't have to see these things to believe it. And we, we know that. But to be able to see this firsthand and see the power of the Lord, bro. It shows you Esau is going to be frustrated. He's very frustrated right now. That's why he wants to come with great wrath because he knows his time is up. All right. He knows his time is at an end. You know, so that's why he's in great wrath and he's very disappointed. Even when you go into this word disappointed here in the Hebrew, that word is pronounced parar. All right. And when you go into it, it says to break or frustrate. All right. It says to be broken. And that goes into his pride, bro. You can imagine when that when that missile hit and it didn't do nothing, bro. That broke his pride because when it comes to Esau's military, one thing that we understand or should understand at least, for you newer listeners, you might not understand, but um, his blessing is the sword. When you read that in Genesis 27, that's his pride and joy is his ability that he's been given to kill and break with the sword. So to shoot a very powerful ballistic missile at this at this chariot, at this um angel man, and for it to do nothing, his pride was broken. And that's only a, a, a small inkling of the power of the Lord. Hey, the scriptures say the chariot to the Lord are 20,000. That was only four of them. All right. And we didn't even see their power. They just stood there and hovered. It just showed the, us the fact that they're invincible. And indestructible. All right. So when you go into that, Esau's Esau's pride is being brought down. All right. And as these chariot videos keep resurfacing, as the men of the Lord are on the highways and hedges doing these shows, all of this is really frustrating these people because there's nothing that they can do. Their pride is broken to pieces. It's divided. Just like when they shot that sidewinder missile at that chariot, nothing happened. You know they were frustrated. All right. And that's why it says it, you know, to, to, to the break. All right. So it says he disappointed the devices of the crafty. All right. Or he breaketh the devices of the crafty. Literally, that missile exploded. Debris flew everywhere, bro. And, and the chariot was unscathed. It was unharmed. The missile, the missile was hurt. <laughs> the missile was broken pieces. But it says he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise and really when you go into it their intention was to blow that chariot up and they had that thought of hope that little bit of hope that the, there wasn't going to be no more of that ship left or it was going to affect it in some way form or fashion all right and when you go into that word enterprise there it's pronounced the washia and it ultimately goes into um their wisdom their knowledge their success what they hold high and again, going into their weaponry, their weaponry is their pride and joy. All right. They've been blessed with the with a particular amount of wisdom to be able to create the type of weaponry that they have, even to be able to split an atom in half. That's divine 
on the left hand side to be able to come up with weaponry that can do that. And that shows you that anything Esau does, that the power that Esau has been given is no match for the power on the right hand side and the power that we possess. All right. Starting with Yahweh Shai and the angels going down to us. And when we get that power, when that power is given none to us, bro, there's going to be nothing that this devil can do. All right. That's why it's written here in Wisdom of Solid and Fire. Let's get it. It's in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Oh my goodness, forgive me. This should be it right here. Yeah, there we go. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and the key point is in verse 17. Yeah, let's get it. This is Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 17. And it reads, he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. So the Lord's jealousy is going to be a complete armor. What we saw with them chariots was an example of the Lord's jealousy, bro, and his power and how that armor was literally impenetrable. And that's the type of power that we are going to possess. All right. We're going to possess this type of power. That This is heavenly power that you see playing in the background. This is heavenly power right here. All right. Verse 18 says this. He shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of an helmet. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. And that's what you see here. This is, this is completely invincible. This is the power of the Lord. And that's where I'm getting at. Because when you read this in Wisdom of Solomon 5, it's going into the elect receiving this power. But this power is going to come from the heavens. The power that we have comes from the heavens. And that's the same power from the heavens that is within these angels. That's within these chariots. All right. That's a invincible shield. It says in verse 20, his severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. All right. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad and from clouds as from a well-drawn bow shall they fly to the mark. And when you read it, it really just goes down into the judgment that's going to come. That's tied with this power. OK, and it went into how it's going to be an invincible shield. It went into how his jealousy is going to be a complete armor. So when Esau really durst fright and fights. When Esau makes this move, there's going to be nothing that he can do. He's going to try, but he's going to fail. All right. And he's going to continually be disappointed. We're in Esau's. We're watching Esau's downfall right before our eyes, man. And it's very beautiful. When you see these chariots, those these chariots are pure power. Pure power, as you see. And like I stated earlier, we have saw videos of people trying to shoot at the chariots. And do these different things and the chair is just floating and gliding and moving through the through the through the bullets and the missiles this right here was a chariot getting hit showing you that there's nothing you can do nothing you can do and this is the type of power that resides within us this is heavenly power we're talking about man this is heavenly power that's why esau's devices are going to be uh, he's going to be disappointed all right. It says the Lord disappointed the devices of the crafty. All right. That sidewinder is a device. And that sidewinder didn't do anything but break in pieces. And that's it. Okay. And let's finish this off here in Isaiah. I don't intend on making this lesson long. I just wanted to talk about this here very briefly. And this is the type of power that is on our side. Isaiah 54 and 17. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 16. It says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth the instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So even the missiles that Esau has over here, it's ultimately of the Heavenly Father. He created the smith to put these weapons together. And he only gave them information to go so far. Now he did bless them, like I said earlier, on the left-hand side, 
to be able to create particular weapons that are divine to a degree. Again, if you have knowledge to split an atom in half and it creates an explosion powerful enough to, to decimate all right, a large area, that's power. But the power on the right hand side has enough power to obliterate, destroy, break in pieces. All right. Even when you read it in Jeremiah, going into how it says Israel, Israel is my battle axe and weapon of war with thee. Will I break in pieces the nations? When you go into that word break, I believe that word is napat in the Hebrew and it means to pulverize. And when you go into that word pulverize, that word pulverize means to break down into fine particles, meaning dust. And this is the power that the, that, that, that this is the power that resides within these chariots, man. All right. What you see right here is is powerful enough to to break whatever down into fine particles. All right. And when you continue in Isaiah 40, 54 and 17, it says no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So no weapon that is formed anything, and we know Esau's blessing is the sword. So the type of power that we possess from the heavens, man, it's untouchable by anything. It's unscathable. All right? It's literally invincible. Just like these chariots. This is pure invincibility, man. And when you see these chariots showing up on these military bases and just floating around and these people are recording them. Now we see it. Obviously, that balance of fear is going to be there because we don't want no, no problems and no parts with the Lord. But when we see them, we rejoice because we know that our kingdom's coming. And these are what's going to be used to burn this place up with fire on top of the nuclear missiles. So when we see it, we rejoice. All right. And when these people see it, it's for their it's for their destruction. And as I was going into it, when you see these chariots, when these people are recording it, these news people recording them, they're on these military bases. That's a threat. All right. That's a threat. Just like on these different coasts of these countries and such, if there is an enemy warship that's sitting there and this happens all the time in war games, they'll just sit there. All right. That's showing you that they're preparing to do something and they're in your territory. OK, and that's the same thing with these chariots, man. This is war games right here. And that is a tactic. All right. They're in the house of the thief. As is written of in Zephaniah, the fifth chapter, they have entered into the house of the thief. And they're sitting there because they're getting ready to make a move. All right. Not yet, because the servants are in the process of being sealed. All right. But as you read it in Revelation, the seventh chapter, once them servants are sealed, that destruction is going to come. All right. And the Lord's going to continually send out these threats. And I know I said I'd end it off here in Isaiah 54, but really, I'm going to end this off here in uh, second Ezra. Let's get it. This is second Ezra 16 and 11. The Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. And remember, I went into that word to break and it means to pulverize. All right. Didn't I go into it in Job chapter five, where it says he disappointed the devices of the crafty. And one of those definitions for disappointed meant to break, to break to pieces. So not only is Esau's pride being broke to pieces, but even his weaponry and his devices that he devised against the Lord to blaspheme his heavenly tabernacle and his angels. All right. And it's going to be broken in pieces. His pride is being brought down. All right. His weaponry is being broken pieces, his pride, and it's ultimately going to lead to him being broken in pieces. All right. And we're seeing the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, threatening these people, threatening this place. So when you see these chariots showing up like this, especially what's playing in the background, these are threats. OK, these are threats right here. So I'm going to end it off there. Lord's will, this lesson here is edifying unto the flock. I want to give all praise, honor and glory. To Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. <laughs> Shalom.